Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited today to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Now, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready to receive a miracle today? Join me right now as we declare this. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Now, we are talking about the man whom, who God will bless. The man that will receive the blessing of God. God wants to bless everybody. He calls a lot. He calls us all. Come. The Bible says ye are called to inherit a blessing. But it doesn't necessarily mean you will inherit that blessing. See that now? Esau and Jacob were both the children of Abraham. And both of them could have inherited the blessing. But Esau did not inherit the blessing. Jacob did inherit the blessing. Praise God, even though they were twins. So I, I was sharing with you on the things that your role, what, what you are supposed to do or not do, so that the blessing of God will come upon your life. So we're looking from Psalm chapter 1. And from verse 1, he talks about the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He doesn't stand in the way of sinners. He doesn't sit with his, in the seat of the, with discomfort. But then he's got one thing that's going for him. He's the light. His thoughts are on what God thinks. What has God said in his word? What is the spirit of God teaching concerning his subject? I remember yesterday we, we even went specific, talking about the season we're in in our nation is an election season. And I'll share with you that now you have a right to vote. But what are your thoughts concerning your voting rights? Are you thinking God's thoughts? Or do you sit with sinners to discuss this thing? And you let them influence your mind by their thoughts? Let me show you. Now, now let's let's look at that Psalms. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm chapter one. He says, "But he's the light and desire the man who's going to be blessed, the man who God is going to bless." Watch this now. But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord. And on his law, the precept, the instructions, the teachings of God, he habitually, not January, not Sundays ago, habitually, meaning that's his habit. So, so you, you all are breaking Nefe. You, you look at this man, and, and you know, there are, there, are, there are some of us, and I've had that happen. I've heard that people say, you know, about me several. So someone is coming to you to ask for something, and then he, he shares it with another person, and says, oh, I'm going to ask, you know, Pastor Tubo concerning this thing. And the person says, ah, just get ready, because Pastor Tubo is going to tell you that this is what the Holy Spirit is saying, consigning it. Or, or, or you understand that now habitually it's your habit it's your habit you cannot hide your habits people will know what your habit is so but now he's saying that your habits your habits should be one that meditates on god's word it says but he habitually meditates, he ponders, he studies by day and by night. What does he study? What does God say? Now then, what we're talking about yesterday, let me show you something in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. From verse 14, this was Moses talking to the children of I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, when you come to the land which the Lord your God gives you and you possess 
eat and live there and then say, we will set a king over us like all the nations that are about us. Okay? Now look at verse 15. Moses talking to them. He says, you shall surely set as king over you him whom the Lord your God will choose. Wow. So, he said, when you get into the land and you settle, now we, we, we are Nigerian citizens already, okay? So, we're in our land. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, you're in your land. Don't be thinking, no, uh, this is not my land. I want to go to a foreign... No, this is your land. If you go to a foreign land, one day you will come back to your land. True, that is the truth. Praise God. So then, he says, when you're settled in that land, and then he said, you must get concerned about who rules over you. Now, this is God's thoughts. This is the mind of God. He says, you must get concerned about who rules over you. So it's not a wrong desire. But then he began to give instructions concerning that desire. The first thing he said, he said, you must make sure that it is the one whom God chooses. He didn't say, it is the one you choose. He said, it must be the one. That's, that's what he says. He says, you shall surely set as king, verse, verse 15 now, Deuteronomy chapter 17, you shall surely set as king over you him whom the Lord your God will choose. Now, he is telling you that God will be committed in choosing a king for you. So, it is now your responsibility to find out who God has chosen. So, here we are right now. See that now? Now, 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 here we are now. You have your PVC. Yes. You are ready to go vote in February. Yes. Okay. So, what are you supposed to do as the one who wants to walk in the blessing? As the one who, who's positioning himself to be blessed by God? I told you the first day on Monday that to be blessed, you've got to qualify for it. To be chosen, God will choose you randomly. He, can, he, would, he has called everybody. Sorry, he, he has called everybody, but he's not going to choose everybody. He's called you randomly. He's called, hey, come, come. You have been called. Called to do what? Inherit a blessing. Oh, good, good, good. But you see, he, the fact that you came to inherit the blessing doesn't mean you will inherit it. To inherit it, he's got to look again. He's got to put you through the test. It to check if you are ready or not. Now, that's why I'm teaching what I'm teaching you. How do you make yourself ready? This is it. Where is your delight? What are the thoughts of your mind? So I'm practicalizing what I'm teaching that even with our present situation. So now I have my PVC. So what is influencing my decision? First, he says his thoughts, he meditates on God's word, on God's teaching day and night. That's his habit. Okay. So now I'm thinking, okay, I want to vote. So who do I vote for? Okay, what does God think? What does God say about things like this? Now I found it, I found here that he said, you, you've got to choose whom God have chosen. Oh, wow. So God chooses kings. Yes, he does. Oh, no, 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 pastor, you don't know. This is Nigeria. This is not Israel. Oh, no, no. He chooses kings in every place. Oh, pastor, what are you talking about? Are you trying to say he is the one that chose, you know, who now? Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, he did. Oh, you've forgotten the story. When God made me Nebuchadnezzar to be uh, an animal, to live with the world, what was the purpose? Said to the intent that the world will know, that men in the world will know that power belongs to God and he gives it to whomsoever he wills, even to the bases of men. Ah, 
car. Not only in Egypt, no. In Nigeria, too, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You mean God will choose a president for us? Yes. Among these people? Yes. So you mean there is somebody that God has chosen to be our president? Yes. And what if we have missed that person? No. We won't miss the person. It's for our eyes to be open to know the person. See that now? Now watch this. He begins to tell us the character of this person. So he says, I'll read that verse again. You shall surely set a king over you, him whom the Lord your God will choose, one from among your brethren. So he's not a foreigner. You shall set as king over you. You may not set a foreigner who is not your brother over you. But he shall, now watch this now verse 16. It says, but he shall not multiply horses to himself or cause the people to return to Egypt in order to multiply horses. Since the Lord said to you, you shall not return that way. Now, don't you, do you understand what he's saying? He says, this person, now you, you must look at his character, that he's not the kind of person that is going to multiply horses. Now, today we don't talk about horses. Today we talk about wealth. You know, he was referring to wealth. He's not a king that will say, ah, now I'm king. I need um, 10,000 horses and to show that I am now the king and I've arrived. No. So he is saying, look at the character. He's not the kind of person who will get in there and want to make himself rich. Now that begins to give you an idea. It begins to give you an idea that the kingship is not a license to be make yourself wealthy. Does that mean a king should be a poor person? No, sir. Because see, if you serve God, God will bless you with things. But then, let it not be that you are the one that have made yourself wealthy. Are you getting it now? Now watch this now. And the next thing he says, he says, He will not cause you to return to Egypt in order to multiply horses. He is not going to cause now. Egypt was a land of corruption. Egypt was a land that that I mean of slavery. He says, look, don't don't get don't don't follow someone who is going to lead you back to the way you don't want to go. So you're a child of God now. You don't want someone who will lead you in the way of corruption. Who will lead you in the way that I mean? In, 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 I mean, look at our nation today. You have to bribe for everything you want to get. God is saying, check someone who will not lead you in that way. Watch this. Verse 17. And he shall not multiply wives to himself. Why is he doing this? Oh, because he's king now. He wants to marry more wives. So check that. So look at the man. How many wives does he have? Uh, how did he get these wives? Oh, when he made, made his first million, it's time to marry another wife. Now nah, he's in a big position. It's time to marry another wife. He says, he is not the kind of person that will multiply wives to himself. Because he's a king. <laughs> it's good. Now watch, this is the reason God is interested that he doesn't multiply wives to himself. That his mind and heart turn not away. It says, Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And watch this now. Verse 18. Now this is instructive and we end here. And when he sits on his royal throne, 
he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book. He himself should translate the law by himself. Now what's he saying? The word of God. These, these will become his testament. I'm not going to do this. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. Praise God. Are you getting the idea? Now, I, I want to walk in the blessing. I don't want to walk in a curse. And so I put myself in this season. And the same thing with everything, every other thing you're involved with. Business, school, everything you're involved with. Your thoughts are, what does God think? Where has God, th what, where does God want me to go to school? Where does God want me to live? Who does God want me to vote? The same thing. Why? Because you're setting up yourself to be blessed. Praise God. I, I pray for you right now. That the wisdom of God will rest upon you and cause you to understand this message and even more in your heart. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.